tonight on the programme, we are in the presence of greatness. A four times Olympic gold medal winner, Sir Chris Hoy, joins us in the programme. Chris, great to see you. Thank you, lovely to be here. Yeah, Good to have you with so us. Thank 18 you. months on since Olympic gold for you. Um, what am I, 18 months it's been? When did you realise just the impact that it had had? Well, we arrived back from, um, from Beijing on the plane and there's always a bit of a reception and there's people there and there's flags waving and things and you kind of half expect that. But I think it was really when I got back to, back to Edinburgh um, and it was about two days afterwards and there was the, the, the bus ride through or from the castle down the Royal Mile and that was unbelievable. There was 50,000 people came out um, and just, you know, butt placards and signs and people waving and cheering, people hanging out of windows and stuff and that was really the first time I realised that this has gone beyond just your family mm -hmm. and friends and the odd person that's into cycling. This is actually, you know, the whole nation was watching. We can wow. see some pictures of it now. I, I was there that day and I can just remember the atmosphere. It was extraordinary, wasn't it? It, it really took me back and you know, I've done so many amazing things and I've been really fortunate to have had just so many exciting things happen to me since Beijing. But that by far was the one that sticks in my mind. That was the highlight of it all. And um, I think it, when it's your home and it's your hometown and people that mm -hmm. have taken the time to come out and to sort of congratulate you and cheer you on, it's, you know, it, it means it meant so much because to Because cycling, you know, unlike football or rugby, isn't a sport that gets that mass attention. <laughs> well, that's it. You wouldn't, you know, just, it's the kind of reception you'd expect for, for a football team to, to get after winning the Cup. It's not like something that a cyclist or, I mean, it, obviously it wasn't just for me, it was for the whole Scottish, mm -hmm. the Scottish athletes that were in the team. Um, and there was Ross and there was Catherine and there was David there too. And it was, it was great. And there were also some young athletes, some young aspiring athletes on the bus with us who, um, you know, hopefully might have been inspired by that day and, and enjoyed the, the spectacle and, and just mm. being there themselves to hopefully go on and maybe become gold medalists to themselves in the future. Wow. Now you've got a book out at the moment, Chris, uh, kind of autobiography. What I found really interesting was you're such an unusual sportsman, and I mean that, <laughs> I will carry on the sentence, because it's not just cycling. I mean, you've, you've done the rugby, the rowing. It's almost like you've just got to keep pushing yourself to the next big thing. Well, I've just I've always enjoyed sport, and I've, I'm quite a competitive person, and it, so I suppose the two things go hand in hand. If you're mm -hmm. competitive and you enjoy sport, then you're you're going to want to try new things and, and just see how far you can go. But you know, it's not to say that I was exceptional at sport as a kid. I enjoyed sport, and I was I was good at sport, but I wasn't by you know by far uh, not I wasn't the best in the class or the best in my year or the best in mm -hmm. in Scotland. It was just you know I, I tried hard and I was quite good, but there was always someone that was better than me, and that's the thing. When you're a kid, maybe you think, well, if I'm not the best at the moment, there's no way I could ever be Olympic champion or become, you know, the best around. But if you work at it and you stick at it, you can. And that was always your drive to be the best? Because, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie, I might be hard to tell, but I hated sport at school. But what was, you know, what was your drive when you were younger? Did your parents, was it something you were encouraged to get involved with? Um, I was encouraged. It wasn't, you know, I did see numerous parents of, of my rivals and competitors that were, you know, at the same time as me, you would have parents that would push them into it and, it almost seemed as if they were the ones that wanted their kids to do well and the, the mm -hmm. kids weren't that bothered. Whereas I was just really fortunate. My mum and dad supported me and gave me the opportunity to do well, but they never made me feel pressured into doing it and they never made me feel as if I had to do it. And um, They just gave me the chances and, and you know, I, I took those chances. But Michelle was talking about you changing sports. Even within cycling, though, you keep changing disciplines within cycling. Is it about the ch challenge? You've always got to have a fresh challenge. Yeah, I think it is. I think I, I get kind of motivated by having a goal and setting that that goal, and then working out how I'm going to achieve, you know, the pathway to get that goal. And and it's almost like a problem-solving exercise. It's not just about the actual performance. It's about getting there. You know, you you see the the performances on TV. You see the actual winning the medals, and that's really the very very end of the road. You know, you've had thousands of hours of training, all these you know numerous training sessions that happen behind closed doors. And it's really that's where the medals are won. That, it's the work that goes on in the background that, that makes it possible to, to win at the end You're of the day. You're back on the bike. You won again at the weekend. You know, it's hard enough for the rest of us to get out of bed these cold November mornings. What gets you out of bed in the morning and back on that bike training every day? Well, it's just enjoyment of being part of the team. And, and you know, don't get me wrong, I had a great time after Beijing doing all the, the kind of celebrity mm. stuff and, and all the exciting stuff. But really, you know, I'm all about my cycle and that's what really motivates me and pushes me on. So after that period of time where I'd been away from cycling, away from the team and away from the, the competition, um, I just wanted to get back into it. I really mm. missed it. And I got back into it and I started to get back to form. And then I, I had a race in, in February in Copenhagen and I had quite a bad crash there. And I, I had an injury in my hip after that. And that put me out of training for 10 weeks and just missing my cycling even more mm. during that period of time. I couldn't do anything at all. No exercise, nothing. Um, and I think that just brought it home how much I missed it and how much I wanted to continue on to, to London.
to hopefully win, win some more gold medals. Wow. Well, you mentioned a wee bit about the celebrity and exciting stuff. You're a sir now. That's going to be pretty amazing. <laughs> it's, it is very bizarre. It really is bizarre. And it still, still seems strange. You know, it takes a long time to get used to. And, um, you know, when people refer to you as, as, as sir, it's, 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 very, it's very nice. And it's a huge honour. Um, and it's amazing just to think of, you know, even today I was in, in a bookshop doing some signings for, for my, my new book. And it was a bookshop I used to work in when I was a student in Edinburgh. And, you know, I got this weird flashback to being in there, working there, and thinking, you know, that was probably 1995, so, you know, 14 years ago. In 14 years' time, imagine I'm coming back into that wow. bookshop with my own book on the shelves. You know, quite bizarre. Um, have you ever used the sir thing? You phone up a restaurant oh and you yeah, can't get it. I'd love it's that. It's Sir Chris Hoy. Well, we had it on the way in here, actually. We got to the, the gate and uh, the driver had a driver for the car. He said, I've got Sir Chris Hoy oh, in the car. Oh, I love that. that. Good, Restaurants, Phil, <laughs> I think you'll find it's Sir Chris Hoy. So, Chris London 2012, uh, can we bring more gold medals back to Scotland? Is it going to happen, Chris? Absolutely. That's, that's the aim. You know, it's... I wouldn't be training now, I wouldn't be competing now if I didn't believe it was possible. Um, last weekend at the World Cup in Manchester, I, I went faster than I've ever gone before. So, you know, I'm still improving and I still have the same enjoyment. Um, and a lot of it comes down to my teammates, really, the young guys coming through. You know, I'm 33 now, I'll be 36 in London. Some of them are 19, 20, 21, and they're improving really, really quickly. So if you don't keep trying to defend your position and keep pushing yourself mm -hmm. on and trying to improve then you know they're going to take your place so in a way it's them that's pushing me on and mm -hmm. hopefully wow. going to you know keep the success coming all of scotland will be behind you and of course not beijing this next time london and hopefully the crowds there to yeah. cheer you on and make it'll it all happen be fantastic for you. and it'll be you know two years before the glasgow commonwealth games as well which yeah, will be 38 then there's no you know maybe even no you don't have to tell your really on tv it's fine <laughs> uh, now of course you've moved disciplines we've been talking about bmx now an olympic sport so That's there's right. no reason it all started with bmx for you hey we happen to have one here <laughs> in the studio i've been waiting for this this is where it all begun and uh, michelle is now going to show us no, no, Michelle is not Stephen. It all started with BMX bike for you. So uh, right. tell us a couple of kind of very basic, quick BMX moves. See if we can get well, me started. There's two this. things. If you, if you get on the bike, yeah. um, like if you've got a front brake, you can do what they call endos by sort of going hard, jump, jump, grabbing your front brakes, and then yeah. you kind of go on the end. But yeah. you can't do that here. Oh, that's so a shame. I would, I would suggest a good thing to try and do is stand up in the pedals. Right. And with the brake on. Um, without the brake on. Without the brake on. And see if you can Steven, lift the bike off the ground. Steven, Steven, Steven. Go, Steven. Yes, we've run out of time on this item here today. That was very Chris, impressive. We'll let you take that as a souvenir. Well, thank you very oh. much. Do you want to have a go? No, I do no. not. Chris, thank you so much. It's an honour to meet you. Pleasure. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Your hero of Scotland. Cheers. Thank you very much.